The wacky misadventures of the Victus crew are back in full swing with issue 5 out of 6 of the Call of Duty Zombies comic book series. Hey, don't you go simping now. These comic books were made by Jason Blundell and Craig Houston, as well as Justin Jordan, Jonathan Wayshack, Dan Jackson, and Simon Bisley. All very talented people, and all of the art belongs to its respective owners. It was published by Dark Horse Comics. The last issue had a pretty intense ending. If you haven't seen any of the episodes in this series, then I'll put a play playlist on this iCard here, and you'll be able to catch up on all the episodes. We have this issue, and then one more after that, and that is the series done. And by then, we'll be able to see how Victors wind up sealing their fate the way we see it play out. Hold on to your butts, as we're about to go into the fifth issue of the Call of Duty Zombies comics. We need to stay calm and stay together. This is an untenable situation. What he said. Where the hell is Stuhlinger? I believe that should not be our primary concern at the current juncture. Aw, oh, crap. Russman knew it was too good to last. Now what? This is Stuhlinger's fault. I can feel it in my bones. Gonna feel your bones poking out your skin, then things get to us. The cyborg killer zombies start tearing the zombies to shreds. All the while, the intellectual zombie stands and watches. Back in the facility where the Cronorium was found, Stuhlinger is sat there talking to Richtofen. Yeah, well, I'm not waiting around until they come back. <laughs> that was my knee. Yes, it hurt. Of course I have it, this book has lots of pretty pictures in it. I'm going to take a shot at one of the... whatever they are, meat golems. I believe it would be wise to reconvene in a more hospitable location. Stay together, I'm going to try and get a better view on things. As Misty coordinates the other three to move, a beaming red-eyed cyber zombie comes up behind her. Not good. Not good! Misty! We can't get to her. Russman needs to keep himself alive. I just... just need... Help? She doesn't die like this. I need her. Misty, we gotta go. Every Russ man for himself. Completely swarmed by the undead and these new robotic yet undead threats, the group have to end up parting ways in order to be able to ensure their own survival. Russ man hates camping. I believe that I have a potential remedy for these newest opponents. Meanwhile, Stuhlinger grabs hold of Misty and they start running to the lab. The lab! We need to get back to the lab! We need to work together. You need to... Stop! Have it your way. Okay, that sucks. And I smell like summer ham now, but it's good to know we can actually kill you. Just die already. I'm so glad I insisted on going out for Little League. Marlton, I know you're down. Thank you. We can remain in our current location. We need, I know, but if we try to do it like this, we're going to die. We need everyone. Russman is out in the woods all by his lonesome. As he turns round in a panic, the world that they thought was real is now beginning to collapse. Well, that ain't good. No, it isn't. Russman asks Stuhlinger if he actually knows what is going on. My friend told me... <sighs> Look, I can't actually tell you what he told me. Something about time and tangiers or something. Uh-huh. Look, basically, this whole place is going to fall apart. Living stuff first, but eventually, it's all going to go away. Oh man, Russman just had his first hot meal in I don't even know how long. And what the hell are you carrying? This is what we're here for. Now we need to get out. Yeah. We do. Victus are now reunited after a dangerous departure that they all took. Well, ain't no one pointing guns at each other. Which Russman figures for a definite improvement. He- It doesn't matter. Stuhlinger is right, yeah. I feel weird saying it, but this place, even if his friend is wrong, those zombies and those other things, we can't fight them. But we need to work together. We've never been a team. Not really. But we for damn sure better start now. Because these are our options. Work together 
or die alone. Marlton, Russman and Stuhlinger all take a minute to gaze at Misty, thinking about what she just said. Marlton approaches Misty and says, Okay, well with that kind of ringing endorsement, how could I say no? Stuhlinger looks a little hesitant, having a minute to weigh out his options. Fine, do we have a plan? Oh yeah, I have a plan. The battle between the cyborg zombies and the normal zombies brutally carries on. Whilst they're all busy, Misty sneaks into one of the cottages. While she's in there, she starts mixing an assortment of chemicals and other household supplies. Okay, yeah, this should work. I really wish I hadn't lost count. Hey assholes, come and get it, the barbecue is open. Misty quips as she launches a Molotov cocktail into the middle of a horde. As the zombies are being torched alive, or dead for that matter, Misty begins to sprint away, signaling the rest of the group. The variables in this plan are unnerving. That is fortunate. Our favourite head zombie peers round the corner looking at everything that is going on, and he gives off that evil grin that he's gave a few times before. Clearly this plan benefits him too. On the next panel we see our ciphers again as per usual with these comics now, and I could be wrong here but I do think that this is the first one we've seen and we're quite a few pages in, but if you've spotted any of the ciphers before, if there are any, then be sure to drop a comment letting me know. And if this actually is the first part of a cipher then I'll just enjoy being right? Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Shit, keep going. Misty. I'm good. Our group return back to the Broken Arrow facility to try and retreat from this strange and deceiving world. I know the layout. Okay, Misty signals Russman and Stuhlinger over. We need to get your fancy book back. What do you think we're doing? I hope that plan is working on your end, Misty. This better work, Misty. We won't have much time. If everything goes as planned, we won't need it. Russman can't remember any time that actually happened. First time for everything, right? And just as the door shuts, we see a tall, dark, ominous silhouette lurking in the hallway as an eerie orange eye glows. Victors prepare themselves in the pods that got them here in the first place, but Moralton is MIA. Where is he? Where is he? He's coming. He better be. because we are out of time. And now it's time for our loading screen that concludes each issue. And this time, it takes on the appearance of the Die Rise loading screen. It has the same panel layout and has some visual similarities too. Let's have a look at the Die Rise loading screen and then we shall take a look at this one. For the Die Rise loading screen, uh, in fact, I just want to clear this one up. There are rips behind the poster. The maps behind both loading screens are the same, all except for two differences that I've noticed. The first thing I've noticed is on the Die Rise loading screen, if if you look behind it, you'll be able to see a transit card, like the little loading screen that you get for transit, and that's fairly normal, you can see it's of the bus station. But what's weird is if you look at the new loading screen, that picture is still there, but it's a lot darker for some reason, and I've got no idea why. It might just be some sort of visual change just to separate the two even more. However, it's weird because the loading screen behind the first panel, where the rip actually is, for both of these screens, by the way, is Nuketown. The other difference here is that on the new loading screen, I believe this is the giant intro loading screen that we had in the last issue of the comic, so it seems to make sense that it'd be underneath the comic book posters that we have. And then for the Die Rise one, it looks like some sort of Kino aesthetic, right? Like it's got the, the film reel by the looks of it. I'm actually not too sure what loading screen that is. Now the first panel of the Die Rise loading screen, our characters are teleported into the map Die Rise, right? Victus are in, I believe this is China. Just like you see in the cutscene of the map. The panel to the right of it, it's just a really nice bit of scenery of the map. The Die Rise is a really cool looking map with the dragon and the uh, the shooting meteors, like it, it looks really cool. Then on the bottom left panel, there's a fractured earth. Now this is obviously because of the events of Moon when Ultimus sent the rockets and blew up the earth from the Moon Easter Egg. It's pretty simple stuff, I feel like everyone knows that, but keep it in mind. And then the last panel at the bottom right is basically just our characters teleporting 
over to Die Rise. And the beauty of this loading screen is that it's actually a loop. Our characters teleport back in, like in the top left panel, and then they die and then teleport again. It, they essentially cycle round once again, like we see in the intro. Let's take a glance at the new loading screen. And yeah, it looks different, but the same. It's kind of weird. And so we'll start again at the top left. We have our four boys, right? Uh, Primus, of course. Nikolai, Dempsey, Takio. But oh wait, that doesn't quite look like Primus Richtofen. He's got the hat on, the uniform looks different. Everything points towards that being Ultimus Richtofen. Now, why is Ultimus Richtofen knocking about with <laughs> Primus? I, I really don't know, because if this is implying that it's after the giant loading screen that we saw, then this just makes things really confusing. However, this is probably some sort of alternate tangent timeline, something like that, where Ultimus Richtofen is with these guys. I don't know why, I don't know the context or anything. Where's Primus Richtofen in all of this? I've got no idea. But regardless, they are in front of the house, right? We can see on this panel here, we can see it better. They've teleported in on the first one, and on this second panel, they're walking up towards the house, more specifically, Dr. Monty's house in his perfect world. And when I say perfect world, I really do mean it. If we look in the bottom left panel, we can see the earth intact is untouched by the plans and events of Moon. I have no idea what would have happened in a timeline for the events of Moon to not happen. Maybe Ultimus Richtofen was just feeling generous and said, you know what? No, I'm not gonna bother blowing up Earth today. Regardless of what actually would have happened, the world is still living on. And now for the bottom right panel, we see our characters going from Stalingrad by the looks of it, and they're actually headed towards Sheffield in the UK. UK boys, where are we at? And this is because the house is set somewhere in Sheffield, or it's at least implied to be there. Very strange loading screen, right? Like there's a lot going on here and there's a lot of confusion. This one, this one to me brings more confusion than anything ever has previously. I mean, the knocked loading screen is a bit weird, but this one is just mind-boggling, really. Because even now, in 2022, I still don't have an answer for this. I don't really have many theories, and I've not seen anything come of this loading screen. So, when you see it, it makes you want to nut, because, I mean, <laughs> look how cool it looks. And the implications for this are huge, but at the same time, I just don't really know what's going on. But we'll try and piece it together nonetheless. First off, also Ultimus Richtofen being with our characters, I don't really know what happened behind that, but they must be going to maybe stop Dr. Monty. And my best guess is that they're going before the events of Revelations. It's also kind of weird that they teleported in front of the house instead of the basement like literally everyone else has. They clearly know that they would end up in the basement if they went in that way. And so somehow they have found a different way to teleport to this house and maybe go in quite sneaky. That's my best guess, because I don't really know what else this could possibly be. One thing that I am certain this loading screen is trying to say is that there clearly is a cycle that they are stuck in here, in this timeline at least anyway, where they keep trying to kill Dr. Monty and keep failing, much like the one that we follow in Black Ops 3, with some differences of course, but these characters just seem like they're here for a reason, and it may be that they've came at the right time after a different turn of events to be able to secure a better tomorrow, but much like Die Rise in the original loading screen, those characters, Victors, are stuck in a cycle, and so are these ones. Not exactly sure at what point, where, when, and why, but choosing to base the loading screen off of Die Rise and then have this whole teleport thing at the beginning, teleport thing at the end, to me suggests that they're definitely in a cycle still. But what are your theories about that? What are they trying to do in this cycle? Are they maybe trying to save the children? Are they trying to kill Monty? both, maybe? Let me know, because this one is a very mind-boggling loading screen. Now for the ciphers, of course, we have the usual suspects that have been solving these, so I'll throw the credit out right now. The first cipher was solved by Liz is a Dolphin, the second one was solved by Liz is a Dolphin, and the third one was solved by Randomizer. These people are absolute legends, okay? Absolute legends for solving all of these ciphers. I really respect the grind from these two, so let's get 
into the first one, and it reads, The voices of darkness and light will call out across time and space. Okay, this is, um, very vague again. I don't know why I get Black Ops 2 vibes from this cipher. Now, maybe it's just because of the whole Maxis and Richtofen voices in everyone's head kind of thing. Although they weren't inherently light and dark, it's clear that one side had better intentions than the other. On the flip side, this could be about the Keepers and the Apothecons as simple as that. You gotta remember the whole Great War thing is not just a battle for Earth or a battle for the perfect world, it's a battle for the whole galaxy, which now that I mention it sounds like Star Wars, you know, it's a battle for the whole universe, hence why they would be calling out all across space and time. Calling out to who exactly? I don't know. Maybe alternate timelines, parallel universes, where our characters are able to stop this war. Cypher 2 says, The man fool seeks redemption. He will not find it. I'm gonna say with full certainty here that this is clearly about Primus Richtofen. I think that's a pretty open and shut case. Richtofen's whole character arc, besides, you know, helping save the whole universe, but besides that, is also seeking redemption for helping create all of these monster zombies in the first place, changing his ways and becoming a better person. Who's calling him the man fool? I don't know. Maybe an apothecon or the shadow man or Monty, maybe? But I think it's obvious that this one is about our boy Richtofen. Our final cipher of the comic is the agents of chaos must be controlled. The agents of chaos to me are clearly Dr. Monty and the shadow man. Those two are literally the definition of agents of chaos. They can change things, they can cause huge catastrophes to happen, and although they're not as in control as they like to let on, they're still always watching, always moving things around, and those things can have huge consequences, right? Consequences which can get whole timelines wiped out. And so by putting them both in the summoning key, which was meant to be the goal, would be to have them controlled. I think issue 5 was a really good read. It hasn't been as good as some other ones maybe, but I think the thing I liked about this comic issue the most, and what really stood out to me here is the teamwork side of Victors, you know. They were four random people that were thrown into this situation unwillingly, and they have to learn to work together and become maybe a bit more than allies in the process. I like that Misty can keep them all together, she's the glue holding everyone together, and she gives another killer speech like she did in the Buried intro, which just shows how good her leading skills are, and I think that this comic book issue overall was her time to shine but also just being able to see Victus grow a little bit closer. Is Moralton going to come back intact? Are our characters going to escape this fake idea of a paradise? What is that damn zombie in uniform up to? And ultimately, how do Victus come to seal their fate by the end of Tagda Toten and find their place in all of this chaos? Find out in the last episode of the Call of Duty Zombies comics. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash the like button, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Turn on the notification bell to stay notified for this final episode. You really won't want to miss that one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.